Oh, what a great night. You know, I love the fact that our business meetings are celebrations about what God has done and what God is doing. I'd much prefer doing this than having other conversations about things that really doesn't matter. But I just want to summarize tonight, just kind of share you my thoughts and hopes. And, and I look forward to these meetings. Uh, well, looking forward is probably not the right word. I'm always with fear and trepidation because you never know what a Baptist church is going to do. You, you never know. But I want to share some thoughts with you that, that hopefully will help you catch my heart in this. A vision is a dream with a plan. I've uh, had poor eyesight my whole life. And I'm excited about this new eyesight that I'm going to experience once my left eye, my good, former good eye gets fixed, how clearly I can see. But Tara said to me many years ago, you may have poor eyesight, but God has given you great vision. And I would rather have the vision of God than anything else. I want to know the thoughts of God, all else are details. And God's vision always is accompanied his dream is always accompanied with his vision, what he desires to go and do. As, you're my pastor, as, you're, as your pastor, it is my desire to lead well with the vision of God. We don't need the vision of men. We don't need the vision of, of a political party or an agenda. We need to know the thoughts of God. I have had many ambitions in my life, many desires but my ambitions and my desires have faded into the fact that I want to live all for Jesus and serve God and God alone. I was thinking last night about men in ministry and how many finish in ministry. Uh, John Bazzano, the wonderful pastor of First Baptist Church Houston, had a list of friends that he started in ministry with, a, a list of 15 friends, and he was the only one left at the end of his life still in ministry. That ministry had consumed them, had chewed them up and spit them out. I want to finish strong. I want to finish well. I want to keep the course and claim the prize that God has for me. And these are the realities I long for this church, that we might achieve our full redemptive potential. We will not be merely marking places and time in the history but this history that we are together, this epoch of time that you and I get to serve God in this local body would be a benchmark experience. I think about Dr. Cheatham, and of course I have to drag him into my talks. The vision that you're experiencing, expressing now was born in his heart some nine million years ago. But Dr. Cheatham, in all seriousness, these are desires you had for this church back in the day when you were there interim pastor for 10 years. This past year has been historical in the life of our church. Historical, statistically amazing. 94 baptisms. People's lives change. Our church continues to expand and grow. Um, we were down a little bit this, this Sunday. We were down around 700, which three years ago would have been ultra high attendance. And that has nothing to do with other pastors. It's nothing to do with anything other than God is moving right now in our time and place and people are coming to know him. And that's so exciting. This past year has also been very challenging. It's been challenging for me personally. We have seen lives change at an astonishing rate, but we've also seen unity challenged like I've never experienced in any other church I've ever pastored. Unity challenged over people who were silly and controlling We've experienced rapid growth, but we've also experienced much resistance. We've expanded our external reach. 1,700 leaders trained in Latin America in a short period of time is astounding. But we've, always, we've also had people say, why are they going there and what are they doing? Instead of celebrating the fact that we're doing something for the kingdom of God, questioning the motives behind 2019 has been a year of personal challenge for me as a leader and cultural challenge for this church as we've led change. I've had to live the reality of what I pontificate. I say things like this. You can grow or you can control. You can't do both. Why did I ever say that? People need reminding more than they need instructing. Love everybody, but move with the movers. Not every resistance is an insurrection. <laughs> the 
the ALT members are making notes now. <laughs> believe the best about people. Don't believe they're out to get you until they form a lynch mob. <laughs> Listen to the voice of God above all else. Church revitalization is a marathon. You didn't even know you needed revitalizing, but God did. And so together we're watching God do an amazing thing. There's been much to celebrate, and we celebrate. This has been one of the most challenging years of leadership for me personally. I've grown and have been stretched. I've had to change my preaching this year. And that's been evidence in my evaluation. I've cut out a lot of my jokes, a lot of my, my nonsense. My wife is pleased. And many of you are as well, even though I didn't tell a pitiful joke about the Lone Ranger and Tonto. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for making me look better. <laughs> I share all of this to share with you and to remind you the battle we're in. When this church said, Jesus, we are yours, we will live all for Jesus, hell heard it as well. And the powers of darkness and demonic forces wants to do everything he can, or they can, to derail what God is doing. And will, many well-meaning but weak-willed people have been deceived by Satan's schemes. Instead of making them the villain, we need to help them with love. Instead of complaining about disunity, we need to lean in with prayer and hope and expectation. To lay aside our own personal arrogance and pride and say, God, this may be my way, but is it your way and is it the best way? And live with our hands open, living all for Jesus. The next year, 2020, has been deemed as the year of vision. The year of vision. To see what God wants us to see. It's my desire for us to climb up God's mountain and see his vision what he has for us. In order to do so, we remember, we must remember the instruction that he gave to Joshua. Found in Joshua chapter one, verse nine. This is my command, God says. This is not my suggestion. This is not my encouragement. This is my command. I've read that passage of scripture dozens of times, preached messages Dozens of times. In fact, the message I first preached to you when I first came here was Joshua 1, 1 through 9. I never noticed command until I started writing this talk. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Don't you be discouraged. Don't you be afraid. Serve me, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Last year, I shared with you a litany of vision of where we wanted to go. And because you need to be reminded more, you need to be instructed, I want to remind you of that vision. Allow me to read this for you, and it'll be on the screen for your remembrance. As a First Baptist Church of Wimberley, this is our vision for 2020. We will say yes to God. We will be people who dare to follow his leadership regardless of the cost. We'll be people of prayer and faith. We will not wring our hands and say, oh my. We will lift our hands and say, help us, Jesus. We will be those people. We'll create an intentional environment and system where people could come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. We will be all about reaching people. But it's my prayer that 100 baptisms a year here be normal, and we will never be normal. We'll provide dynamic weekend worship gatherings for all ages. These gatherings will be relevant and excellent, using the arts to touch the heart with teaching that is biblical, leading to God-honoring life change. Next Sunday evening, we're having a gathering called First Serve Team. I invite you all back because we're gonna to have to wrestle down. We need to start a third gathering. What will that look like and how will that be? We're gonna talk about it, all right? We're not gonna make an arbitrary decision and give you two choices, take it or leave it. We're gonna talk about it. 
and decide where do we need to go to provide space to reach people. We'll be a church of all groups of all ages, genders, and lifestyles. These gatherings will be a primary place. In fact, there's only two genders, just reminding y'all of that, okay? <laughs> These gatherings will be a primary place of care, spiritual growth, and evangelism and life change. We will build leaders who build disciples who in turn build other disciples. We will launch and maintain an intentional discipleship process ensuring our leaders and future leaders are trained in disciple making. And through our group ministry, we are leaning into that. You guys saw the potential of what could be in our intentionality of aligning the This Is Us process with our weekend teaching and our God time gathering. We're going to continue to do that, continue to provide video curriculum and other instructed curriculum that you might intentionally tie together. Now, y'all are Texans and you're Baptists and we can't force you to do anything, but we're going to provide these things for you. We'll create an environment, a system for every member to minister according to their God-given shape. A member without a ministry is miserable. We'll create a leadership engine to equip leaders to lead well through time-honored biblical concepts modeled after the servant leadership style of Jesus Christ. This leadership engine will be for the leaders of First Baptist Church and the body of Christ. It means we're going to continue to equip and train pastors all over. This vision about re renaming or re-engaging the name of First Baptist. I don't know what we're going to do with that. God has not told me, but I, I believe that we need to do something to help the broader family of God. Not that we have all the answers, but we're one beggars who found where bread is, and we need to share that with the other beggars. We'll invest in the next generation, equipping to the serve in the now and the next. I'm so excited that J.J. Weeks is coming on as being a deacon, a young man in his 20s, have an opportunity to grow. Casey, how old were you when you were ordained as a deacon? 28. Yeah, so you're what, you're 30 now? Is that right? 35, yeah. It's exciting to me. We'll join God in the church planting and church revitalization movement by being a teaching, reaching, and resourcing church. We'll be risk takers in exploring new and innovative ways to expand our reach locally and globally. I got a phone call yesterday there's 70 churches in Cali, Colombia, who want us to come and teach there. Meech, Senor, Tom. Cali, Colombia. That's another place we ain't taking no girls. Because it may be a place we have to shoot our way in and shoot our way out. But you never know what God will do. We'll intentionally engage in bringing God's love to Wimberley, Texas, North America, and the world through prayer, projects, and the giving of resources. This will be an effort with direct relationship with the SBC and other like-minded churches and organizations. We'll function as a family by having fun, believing the best, guarding unity, and structuring according to relationships and purpose. We'll be people in places of help, healing, and hope for individuals and families. We'll create a core curriculum, a spiritual pathway, which we've already created, that allows people to discover Christ-like maturity by equipping them to connect, grow, serve, and share the love of Jesus in word and deed, strengthen families, and live out the biblical stewardship and develop their leadership gifts. I'm ex really excited about this one because this is something we pontificated two years ago. We will pay off our debt and expand our campus creating environments for building lives for preschoolers, children, and students. The vision will become a reality. I'm hoping that next year's State of the Church, I will not have to have that one on the list. We will, never, we will give our best in all we do and all we are to leverage technology as we pursue the vision detailed above for the glory of God. We're currently working on a state-of-the-art website that'll make our church accessible to millions of people, which I'm very, very excited about. I have a podcast. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, I recorded three more podcasts this past Friday, Friday morning, 7.30 to 9.30, approximately recorded those podcasts. This podcast, for some unknown reason, has broken the top 500 of Apple podcast. Uh, it's gotten the attention of iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio is a multinational platform that might pick it up and start producing the podcast. I'm not making any money out of this, y'all. We're doing this to expand the reach all for Jesus. If you have trouble sleeping at night, download the Scott Weatherford Leadership Podcast. It will help you. It will help you. 
I want you to consider this. All of this is big vision, big plans. And we cannot do this in our power. Only God can do this. And God never does anything that we can do. He only does things that he can do. George Barnum, in his book, Fish Out of Water, he gave us a great illustration of the difference between human vision and God's vision, and I want to conclude with that. Human vision is based on trying to maximize our resources and skills. God's vision is based on using us beyond our capacity. Human vision is based on accomplishing the most appealing dream. God's vision is based on using us beyond, uh, God's vision God's vision challenges us to accomplish an impossible or improbable dream. Human vision is often based on what brings us delight. God's vision is a reflection of what brings him delight. Human vision is dangerous because it inflates our ego. God's vision is dangerous because it demonstrates his power at work within us and our complete inadequacies. Human vision drives us to push ourselves to the limit. God's vision drives us to our knees in submission, humility, and obedience. Human vision represents a commitment we develop and pursue until we're tired of the battle. God's vision becomes an obsession we embrace until he enables us to fulfill it or he brings us home. Human vision reflects our cultural obsession, size, speed, status, and success. Y'all, I am so weary of churches judging their effectiveness based on size, speed, status, or success. God's vision reflects biblical obsession, people, holiness, love, and transformation. Beloved, I want to know the thoughts of God. Everything else are details. And it's my prayer that this church called First Baptist Church Wimberley, during our epoch of time that we serve together, would be a building lives church that honors God, and we will live unashamedly, passionately, all for Jesus. And I am so honored and thankful to be your pastor.